Hi, folks. So one of the questions that we've seen our mentees struggle with the most when they are doing technical interviews, it's also one of the most obvious ones. And that is, what are you currently working on? And the problem with this question is that it's so open-ended, right, that many developers fail to answer well, so they fail to proceed to the technical interview. Now, if you are one of them, it's probably because a bunch of different reasons. But number one, it's a lack of preparation, which results in you coming across as overly generic in your answer. So for example, if you say something like, yeah, I'm working on building features for a full stack application, that's not going to be enough to stand out and to impress your interviewer. And as I said, the key to that is to do a bit of prep work, right? And this is what Bogdan is going to show you today in this video on how to do for you to have enough ammunition when that question comes in to have enough stuff to talk about. And remember, part of being a senior engineer, it's being able to go deep when you're being asked such questions and being able to go deep, technically speaking. Bogdan, so if I were to ask you, right, this is an interview, I'm calling you up and I'm saying, hey, Bogdan, so what are you working on? Can you tell me more about that? Sure. So the number one thing you want to have ready here, it's a one sentence answer that he can give to what we call a civilian, somebody that's not familiar with your company. They never worked. Imagine you are telling this to your somebody that's not even tech savvy. So if you were to ask me that question, I would have a one sentence written down and to be something like, well, so right now I'm working um, on a finance application where where uh, our users can basically make payments online and see the payments in their, uh, you know, in their in their mobile app. For example, that we are building with uh, React Native, and then we make a little pop, right? And usually the interviewer will ask a bunch of follow-ups, but you really want to have a one-sentence description of the product and what's the value for like the end user. So that would be um, number one. Now, normally the interviewer will developing on this very same question. So they would ask you things like, okay, so what's your team size? And again, you want to make sure you write this down. So how does your team look like? That's what they usually ask. Or can you tell me what's your role in the team? And here we want to say things like, well, we are a team of five developers, let's say, three front end developers, one full stack and a back end person. We work together with a dedicated product manager and a designer, and we are a cross-functional independent team. So basically, we release our features independently. We organize ourselves in two-week sprints where we have refining sessions on backlog. Then we decide what tickets we will commit to in the next sprint. We assign effort points and story points and we make a sprint commitment as we deliver our tickets we um, deploy continuously so we then deploy at the end of the sprint uh, the bottom line here is you want to know how your team is organized and it's a combination of the description of the team and a combination of agile practices now the most common thing people tell us in the people we work with is that you might not be working in an agile environment i was in that situation myself you might not work for a very professional company it might be chaotic in that case you want to write down the status quo and then inject a be the best practice. So you always want to present your experience in a way that it does show that you know best practices. Then just tell them, well, I'm kind of just picking up tickets from the sprint. Okay, so before we move on to the next part, let me write this down. This will typically happen in a hiring manager interview or one of those question around interviews. So the first thing we want to always have ready, it's like, the what? What are you working? And here you want to write down, you know, kind of your the product and the users. And so, you know, a bit about the sector and the company, but it has to be clear in very short, easy to understand sentences. What, what, what are you building? Is it an e-commerce? Is it like a store? Is it a SaaS product? What are they say? What does your company do? And again, the most important thing here is do not use your company jargon. Make it easy for someone from the outside to understand it. Yeah, that's the biggest mistake the developers we work with were doing, right? That was keeping it very high level, uh, not having any specific and keeping this this company jargon that you said. Because companies have this, oh, our mission is to revolutionize finance. And then you see people coming in a software engineering interview as a software engineer and they ask them, what are you working on? Well, I'm working on revolutionizing finance. And that's not true. That They don't want to know that. That's what, what your company does, right? You want to talk about the specific, if you can be specific without right, spending 30 minutes talking about it, but in a very, in a bunch of seconds, if you can be specific and at the same time, keep it high level, that would, as Bogdan mentioned, be the best way to go about it. Exactly. And the, thing, the second thing is you are a software engineer. So don't go too much into the business. It always has to come from your you know, product development uh, slash software engineering perspective. A lot of people online these days are telling you, oh, if you're an engineer, um, you should make sure you know the business and so on. But if you're talking too many business terms, they will think uh, you're not a real like technical person. Now, a natural follow-up, and in most cases, the, the follow-up on this would be, um, can you tell me how does the team look like and your role? And here you want to have really some number, like what's the team size? 
how many software engineers are in your team? Are they focused on the back end? Are they focused on the front end? And usually a lot about your agile process. And so here you don't want to be vague. You don't want to say, well, we're using agile methodologies. You really want to be specific and write this down way before you start interviewing, which is, hey, you know, are you doing two weeks sprints? Are you doing Kanban? Are you deploying continuously? How do you estimate? What are the typical meetings? What is your routine? Do you have daily stand-ups? And what software do you use even? So, and again, you you want to summarize this in a sentence and say things like, well, so right now I'm working in a team of five software developers or five engineers. We have a dedicated product manager. We have a dedicated designer and we organize ourselves in two-week sprints. We release continuously and we usually you know, have the typical agile rituals like we do backlog refinings, estimates, and then we commit to what goes into the next sprint. And if you did this too well, the next thing would probably, okay, now how does your architecture look like slash system? Because they want to get the feeling of, you know, have you worked on a system that's as big as ours? What is the kind of system you've been working with? And the advice here is try to prepare a bit your current architecture. Even if you're working, let's say only in the front end or only in the back end, try to map out the architecture of your whole company. What were the systems you heard people talk about? How do they relate to each other? And then you can basically tell them, you know, things like, well, I'm working on a microservices architecture. We have different services that we are integrating with our front end. We're using micro front ends or not. We have a content management system. We have CDNs that we're working with. We're deploying to AWS. So pretty much have a short version of what your current system architecture looks like and try to map this out way before, again, you start interviewing. Because if you go in without this prepared, you're just going to go all over the place. You won't be specific enough. There'll be too many gaps and you'll come across as someone that has very little experience. And so you really want to draw this. I'll give you a very short example. So let's imagine in one of my previous experience, I was working for a banking application, right? So I usually usually have a front end, but of course we're, we're building this in a scalable way. So people never go straight to the front end. They might have a CDN that's kind of delivering this front end application in a scalable way. So you want to draw that too. And again, do a bit of a system design exercise with your old company. So when a lot a lot of people, when they go into system design, they think, oh, I need to know all the, you know, super highly available AWS or Amazon use cases or how did Google or Netflix build what? Most of them don't even know like what the current company does. And that's way more important. So we have our front end and usually there's a fleet, it's one or several backend services. So we're going to have a bunch of backend services here. You might have an API gateway. Again, everything you can take from your current architecture. Bogdan, just to clarify, we are sketching out by ourselves. This is an exercise that they should do by themselves before the interview, right? Um, mm -hmm. Basically sketching out your current architecture at a, at a high level for you to have enough material to go technically deep when you when they answer this question. And correct me if I'm not wrong, but this, this question of what are you building on and can you tell us about the architecture will come up later in the interview process as well. Right? It's usually, hey, what are you working on right now early in the interview process? But later on, this question will come up again in system design interviews. And this is why this kind of preparation makes a lot of sense. Exactly. The only difference between the interviews is that the more technical you get and the more you get to the end of the interview process, you need more depth. I need to go much, much mm -hmm. deeper in an engineering interview than in the first initial screening call or the hiring manager. But we are always talking about the same thing. You'll always describe the same system. The only thing that changes is the zoom in capability, the specificity, like how, how specific you get about things and how in detail you go. So for someone that's doing this for the first time, imagine a, a software engineer, they never did this. They have to open up a TLDR. Right? That's what we advise you to do if you're watching this. Mm -hmm. After you watch the video, open up a TLDR and try to draft out, just like Bogdan did, try to sketch your current architecture. Right? And, I, and I see two exactly. challenges. Bogdan, please correct me if I'm wrong. I see two challenges. Number one, there are parts of the systems that you don't know, which Bogdan, maybe you can tell us how do we deal. If we don't know enough, maybe we have to read some documentation, go back to your old company, etc. And the second part is you might have technical gaps about stuff that you know it's there, but you don't know how it works. In that case, you might want to close those technical gaps and speak Speaking of which, there is a free technical assessment that we put together for you. It's in the comments on the Senior Dev website that you can use to understand what those gaps are. And that knowledge will become very, very useful in these kind of scenarios. But going back to the topic at hand, Bogdan, you know, how deep should we go? Should they go when they do this for the first time? How technically deep? And what can they do when they don't know something? How can they deal with that? Okay, so for number one... The depth, I would go as deep as you possibly can. Again, this is your kind of interview prep and you want to map out everything you know. 
about your current system. And ideally, you know as much as possible. If you find things that you never touched or you don't know about, try to do as much reading as you can and map out the picture. But when you go in and talk about that, you can mention, hey, um, so I wasn't working myself specifically on that part of the system. But like what I can recall, or I do recall some of my teammates work on it, and I uh, and you know, and we were using, I know, for the identity server, let's say you never worked with it, but you're using AWS Cognito or you're using Okta. And so you do need to look like you're aware of what the people are around you are doing. But if it's something you're totally unfamiliar with, don't commit. Like don't say, well, yeah, we use Okta. And then they will ask you, they'll go deeper into that. And then you blank out and you look like, you know, you feel and look like a fraud. So if it's something you had competence on, definitely talk about it. If it's something that it's needed in the system, but you feel like you don't have that much experience, just say, hey, um, I wasn't directly working on this part of the system, but I do know some of my teammates were, and they had a lot of troubles with whatever, let's say. Got it. Is there um, anything else we should do? Yes. Should so the fourth part, once you have the system mapped out, it's you want to talk about the software lifecycle, basically your deployment. And we are in a senior-only market. A lot of the companies will only hire people that have deployed software before. And so you really want to know, you had a pipeline, you're probably pushing code. What were the different steps? Where was the software running? Were you using AWS? Were you using Google Cloud Platform? And what were the different steps to get the software live? Were you running on Lambdas or containers or, you know, on-premise? You really want to understand the whole cycle of your code, you know, going all the way to production software and how you were monitoring and what alarm system you used to, to monitor and fix production issues. Um, there's a couple of videos that we have on the channel about CICD, so make sure you check those out. But do map out your kind of the pipeline you had and typically uh just to put a very short example there will be some building where you you build the application then there's some code quality code quality checks like you know if you're doing javascript it's linting and then there's usually some unit tests that you run there's going to be some tests in your pipeline that are running and if that goes well then you kind of finish the build and that's when the deployment starts let's say your company was using docker that will be deploying the docker container but whatever there will be a deployment step and you want to go in and map those out and understand where you know like be super specific like okay deployment where were we deploying were we deploying to a virtual server or let's say we use containers was it ecs so exactly what was going on you really want to be as specific as you can um, because again people will ask you like, okay so what do you know about deployment were you involved in the deployment and even if you are a front-end developer if you're going or even a pure backend, if you're going for a senior position, they expect you to know how you are deploying your own application. Awesome, Bogdan. Two questions for you. Actually, two, two things. Number one, for the people watching us, if you are a front-end developer, for example, or a full-stack developer, and you are not involved in the deployment process, okay, because the, there's a lot of, sometimes there's a lot of red taping in companies, only certain teams get access. Other times, it's not something I do, so why should I care about it? Like that's the attitude. We do advise you to get your hands dirty and to understand how is actually software, your software, the app you are building, being shipped to production after you commit your your code, right? Number one. And number two, Bogdan, you know, what if my company doesn't have a proper deployment uh, pipeline? What if, you know, they're using an FTP server? How, sh how would I deal with that? So... If you've never, if you're never involved in this and, or your company didn't have a proper process, then the best way that I would recommend is create a free account on, on GitLab or any of those platforms and try to do a very simple deployment. If you're a React developer, deploy a React application to AWS and try to do a bit of research and see how could I deploy it and build a small kind of proof of concept around that. Because really it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem. And if you've never done it, companies will be very reluctant to even, you know, give you the position, but also even if you have the position, give you the ability to, to take that responsibility. So you need to do it yourself. And it's not as hard. It's, it's, it is a very intimidating part of the process, but it's not as hard as it looks like. Um, so go ahead and just take, you know, a simple app that you had and try to deploy it. The lifecycle mapped out. Try to have a pipeline that every time you push code, it does all those things automatically. But if you've never done it, you need to start somewhere and it's better to start now. And finally, if you had all this mapped out, you're already ahead of 90% of the people. But what will happen is that in a specific, more kind of technical uh, interviews, like uh, the question around or when you're interviewed by the engineers themselves, they will go more specific into API design. And 
a lot of people, when I say API, they think REST API. But when I say API, I mean, what were the different interfaces in your system? So if you were consuming backend APIs, were they REST, were they GraphQL, and how do they look more or less, right? So we need to know, okay, what are you using? This is a bit more of a detail component design, but were you using REST, GraphQL, and were you using, you know, what kind of databases you're using, and were you using like, kind of event streaming, all these kind of things. Um, the more you know, the better. But as you see, this is more the granular detail. So it's at the very end. And just to recap, basically, whenever you get one of those interviews, the most important thing is that you know what we're exactly working on, right? What were the products, users, what was the company doing to, to make money from an engineering perspective, right? We don't know, you're not a business person, you're a software engineer. How did the team look like? So write these things down. What was the team size? size? Do you use Kanban? Did you use Agile? Um, did you do sprints? How did you, what were the different meetings you had with the team? You have, you probably had a weekly stand up, refinement, and so on. And then moving on to, okay, what was the architecture of your system? And try to draw this to the highest level you possibly can. And then what was the software lifecycle to deploy that system you're working on? Um, if you never done this, try to build a small proof of concept yourself. And then finally go into, okay, specific API design questions about, you know, were you consuming REST APIs or GraphQL? How were you authenticating? What were you using for monitoring? How was, you know, how was data being passed from one part of the system to the other? Awesome. Bargain. And for the people watching us, do make sure to adjust the depth kind of the stage of the interview you're at. So if you're being asked, if this is something you're being asked by a recruiter, then don't talk about load balancer, right? Basically, just to make it clear. And the second part would be, I think, a good frame of mind to something to keep in mind as you, as you answer these kind of questions. It's do not put yourself in a position where you are being we are being easily attackable. What do I mean by that? If you go in the, into the interview and you say, no, this is what we are doing and this is what it should be done and blah, 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 then it's very easy for the interviewer to jump in and say, no, what do you mean this is done like this? It should be done like this. And that's a lose-lose, right? Because you you know, you know, put yourself in a in a, in a a top position. A better way to, to work around that is to just frame these things as, hey, look, this is what we were doing. This is what the kind of best practices are. This is what I know. You know, this is what we were doing. This is what I know. This is how I think it should be improved. Do not think that you you have to be some kind of authority, right? Because that will lead to a conflict with the interviewer, right? And you don't want that. You just want them to know, hey, I know the best practices. And this is my current experience. And this is how I would be doing. And you want them to be part of that. Okay. With that being said, Bogdan, mm -hmm. is there anything else we should keep in mind when asking, when answering the question, you know, what are you working on right now as a software engineer? Like you mentioned, um, there's, you don't want to be attackable. You don't want to make too many big claims. And that's why it's important to talk in terms of, well, so my understanding or in my last position, this is what we are doing. And then invite them to add their feedback. Most interviewers, um, they're not so experienced interviewing and they do want to have the last word. So they want to look like the smartest person in the room and you want to give them that privilege. And so that's why you always want to come in from the angle of, okay, this is my experience. This is our understanding. This is what we're doing. What are you folks working on? And that will allow you to have this back and forth without you being making big claims that are easily attackable as you mentioned, and putting yourself in a position where you're like a, an easy target. Awesome. Okay, folks. Well, uh, two questions for the people watching us. Number one, do your homework. Just watching content, watching Bogdan and I, solving interview questions or answering these things, it's not going to magically upskill you. So I invite you to do the homework. I invite you to go to TLDRAW, open it up, and start answering the questions that Bogdan was mentioning. You can rewatch this video if that's going to help you. And the second part is if you want Bogdan and I to keep making these kind of videos, just let us know in the comments. We are reading all of them. We try to answer all of them. Sometimes we can because we have a lot of stuff in our hands, but we're going to pay attention and make another video. If you want us to make another video going more in depth with this kind of answering these kind of questions. With that being said, Bogdan, as always, thank you so much. And we will see you folks in the next one. By the way, if you're interviewing right now, check out this playlist where you can find a lot of interesting interview questions that are being answered by Bogdan and I. Cheers.